Hey everybody, welcome back to part five. This one is all about uh, the Rose Garden stamp. So I already pulled it off the mat, but as you can see here, it is a beautiful, and you can see it right here as well. I, already, I had to practice to see if it would work. Um, this is a beautiful background stamp, and so I'm gonna use this in a little bit of a different way than you normally would. I'm gonna make borders. Um, I actually signed up to be part of a group where we're gonna swap borders. And I thought, ah, oh, that's kind of fun. And so you're supposed to make anywhere between five to 10, and I'm only gonna have be able to do five because these are gonna be quite intricate little borders. Um, there's gonna be a lot of coloring on them, and I'm gonna make them all different. They're not all gonna be identical. The background stamp is identical, but the rest isn't. So what I did is I wanna be able to mail it in a standard size envelope, so I made these to fit. Oh, they're a little too big. Well, sugar. I'm gonna have to cut them down before I end up inking them all or painting them all. So I'm gonna cut these down a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, so standard, I'm gonna have to, I thought I had measured that correctly. I'm gonna have to cut about an inch off of these. And so they would be useful for a card. Um, either that or I might go ahead and do, I don't know. Hmm. I'm gonna play, I might do some different lengths. So for fun, anyway off track whoa well it's just distressed <laughs> okay so i just dropped my ink pad on top of my borders there yeah real smart so i'm calling that distressed now we're going to put something on top of them anyway so i'm not too terribly worried okay so i'm going to go ahead and ink up my pad i've got two of my borders lined up next to each other and i'm going to stamp simple as that it is a beautiful rose uh pattern that is on here lift up re-ink and yes some is going to get on my mat and i am absolutely fine with that go to the next one stamp there we go All right, so I went through and I stamped all these uh, various lengths. So some of them I've stamped specifically so they could fit on a five and a half inch card going long way. Some of them I fit so they would fit on a four inch going to up and down. So I really kind of played with how they could be orientated in terms of um, card making. Some I left little pieces, some I've left really long. So I am catering this to a card maker and not necessarily a scrapbooker because if I was going to do a 12 inch long envelope, that would be really super expensive to mail. And that was not the point. We were told to use a standard size envelope. So the longest piece I have is going to be able to fit into here. And that's kind of the point we're going for. Um, Okay, so I ended up having way more because I cut them down to smaller sizes. Now I'm gonna play with color. So what I have is I have a whole bunch of reinkers, and I'm gonna move some of these out of the way. And I think I'm just gonna do a straight color wash on them. I was thinking about doing some detail and you could, but because I've got so many, I'm just gonna play and I have a ton of different reinkers. And the best way to do this, I have found is get yourself a paintbrush standard paintbrush, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and we're going to do a set of colors. And I might end up, whoa, blending some of my colors as I'm going along. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up every single one of these little wells because it's going to go quite a ways. And if I run out, then I'll just blend. So I've got a color, I've got alcohol on every single one. And British Monroe has, for every single color you see up here, we have a reinker that goes with it. So I'm gonna do some terracotta. And you gotta make sure that you shake them because these inks are a little different. They are not your standard reinker because the formula for the ink is its own formula. It is not a chalk ink. It is a, it's what we, we actually call this a surface ink. It is very, very different. So I'm gonna go ahead and you see that there's kind of like a chalky layer that's in the bottom, but it's not chalk, it's different. And I can't really describe it any other way than saying it's its own formula. It's called a surface ink. So this is the surface re-inker. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up with all these fun colors. 
and mix them up. Now, I do need to clean off my brush between each one because I don't want to contaminate from one to the other. So I'm going to speed this up and fill them all up. Okay, so just so you guys know which colors I've used here. Jack-o-lantern, terracotta, aubergine, cabbage, jurassic, sea, zest, and sage. Now, could you do this with chalk shimmers? Could you spray these and have fun? Yeah, but I really want kind of a watercolor wash look. So I'm gonna get myself, that's eh, a little too big to stick in there. I'm gonna get myself a decent sized brush because I'm basically just gonna brush this on. This ink dries fast, the detail ink, so there's no problem with how it's gonna look. So just to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and blend. And can you do this with water? Most definitely. But I did an ink lab series where I went through and I played with all these reinkers, and I found when brushing with them, alcohol is fantastic. It makes them act like a watercolor. I mean, look how easy. You see how easy that is just to brush that on? So super simple. It's acting like a watercolor paint, which is just fabulous. Look how pretty that is already. It's almost like it's a pattern paper. Boom, done. You know, if you wanted to add, so here we go. Clean this up, wipe my brush off, go to a new color. I think I'm gonna do the zest next. So that one was C. And I love that I kind of dropped the, um, that was a happy accident. I uh, dropped the ink pad on top of the paper and so it left all these funny little flecks on there. And guys, this is standard cardstock. This is nothing fancy here. It left all these little kind of fun flecks so it almost looks like it's distressed, which is pretty fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep inking these up, setting them off to the side, or painting them now, watercolor painting. Just kind of wiping my brush you know, because these are kind of a distressed look and they're kind of really pretty muted tones, I'm not too worried about the colors blending. I'm kind of going dark to light. So now I'm gonna hit my orangey looking ones. So my locomotive and my jack-o-lantern. Go ahead and wipe these on. Look how pretty. So super fast, easy. They're gorgeous. I love that there's some darker tones and lighter tones. Push them off. Go to my next one, kind of wipe my paper off a little bit. And I'm gonna speed up. Okay, so now I've gone through and I've done one of every color, but I still have three of these left. So I'm gonna do some blending now and have some fun. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the aubergine and mix it in with the C color. And really kind of get a blend of those two. And so now when you go back and you look between, here's the two, I'll, I'll hold them up when we're done. It is a blend between the two colors, so it's made its own thing. A little bit of a different quality now. And so look, here's the three colors next to each other. See how different they are? So you can blend them to make your own. It just like any other paint, you blend the paints. It's the same concept. So now I'm gonna take these two colors of green and add a little bit of the zest in there, or I might just take it, you know, and take that and go into the zest. Have some fun. Create my own color of green. You do need to be careful not to oversaturate. So again, just kind of looking at the three colors of green, we've got similar but not identical, definitely not as light. See here that they're all a little bit different. So here's the zest. 
but then see how this new tone looks completely different than the other ones. It's created its own little color, color wheel almost. And then, let's see what happens. Let's see what color this makes. It's kind of a brown, that's cool. We haven't had a brown yet. Pop a little of this color on there. It's a little bit of a, yeah, I've made brown which happens when you go opposite colors of the color wheel. So if you took red and green, which orange is close to red, you're gonna create a brown color, which is fine. Add a hint of green on top of that. I mean, play with it. That's the beauty of this, is you can just go through and play. And this is lending it now. If she wants to go in and add some color to these, she can. I mean, we've obviously created our own pattern paper but I've created them into borders, which is kind of fun. They have little strips that she can add to any of her projects, cards, tags, ATCs, and a multitude of different colors. Beautiful earth tones basically is what all of these are. They're not super bright, they're not dark, they're just these beautiful, lovely earth tones. Super fast, um, using a background stamp as your background. Now, if you wanted to go in, and let's say, let's take one of our detail brushes here, and I wanted to come in and take some of this darker green and kind of go through and paint individual strips. Let's go with the darker green here. You know, and kind of add some extra tones of color in here and just pick different tones. And you really want to get detailed on this. By all means, have fun. It's just, that's a lot of work. And to do this on every single one would be kind of a pain in the tushy. And I like the wash, but I, I think I'm gonna have fun with this one for a minute and just kind of keep playing with it and playing with the color tones just to show a variety. You could easily do this with a, kind of a pinky tone because it is um, a flower. There's nothing to say that you can't. So just picking the different tones of color. It's okay if they blend. No big deal. You know, pull up another tone in there. Play with it. Kind of make each section its own little color. And it creates a whole new look. I created the base tone of a color by adding, and so I can leave some completely plain. I don't need to color in every one because I've already done that. I've done that with the base tone of color. I kind of went overboard in the center there, but that's okay. So I'll finish this guy out. Keep on adding some new tones of color here and there. there. So that just creates a whole new look now of an element. And so it's almost like a little bookmark and that looks really pretty with all the different tones of green. Um, and I, cause I started with such a light color that really makes everything kind of pop. I might do that with this guy cause it's so big just to play again, not doing every single one. Just adding some more tones of color onto your strip just kind of makes it kind of cool. I think we need a little purpley one right in the middle here. There we go. And blend them. You know, I was I kept adding colors and playing with it. And as you do that, you're getting new tones. And so I no longer have exactly the same tones that I had in all the others. They're all a little bit different. So that just cre creates something pretty cool. 
Um, they are gonna dry out over time because alcohol does evaporate. So just add a little bit more as you're going along and you're good to go. So these, this is the Rose Garden stamp, as you can see here. Ta-da. And I created all these amazing borders to send off to the person that I'm swapping with. Some are multi-toned, some are single-toned, um, but they're all using the same background stamp and they're in a variety of different sizes. So thanks so much. Don't forget to come back tomorrow to check out the last stamp and I hope you subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.